Right, so hi folks. So today, me, Jake and Sarah, we're at the Wood of Cree. And the Wood of Cree is a fragment left over from the Galway Temperate Rainforest. And as you can see, what's iconic about the Temperate Rainforest is all these epiphytes, these mosses and lichens. And that's all created by very unique climate. Um, so here, it rains about 140 centimetres of rain a year. That's more than the surrounding area. And it also has a mean temperature that's between 4 degrees and 18 degrees. And it's that constant climate, those constant conditions that create this unique habitat here. So we'll see what we can find today. So just down here, as you see, we've actually got something called hair ice. And hair ice is a strange phenomenon. It's actually a microscopic fungus and when the frost comes it creates these strange ice crystals so that's the ice crystals made by the fungus which is quite interesting so if you can see here these are mosses bryophytes and these are key indicators of a temperate rainforest system so in a forest like this believe it or not there may be more than 20 species of moss um, so here we have a uh, Thuidium, which is called common false fern moss um, and these are really good for filtrating the water so these temperate rainforests are really important for cleaning the water that we drink and use in our agriculture and this one here is polytrichum which is called hair cat moss and once again really good for filtrating that water so this here is a woodland door beetle this is actually a dung beetle um, and what's most striking is actually the underside, if you can see that. It has this beautiful inflorescence, violets and blues. Uh, but these are really important for getting rid of animal waste. But uh, yeah, woodland door beetle. So right here we have a polypoidy fern and this is a very good ep uh, epiphytic plant. So this you can quite clearly see is growing on the tree and this is an indicator of our cloud for our temperate rainforest system. So here on the understory you can see this blaeberries. So this is Blueberry, effectively, or bilberry, it's called. And this is actually not the same species we have in the supermarket, that's a Canadian species, but it still produces berries that we can eat um, and very good for wildlife. And this understory will also help protect saplings from the trees so they're not getting frosted, which a lot of our native woodlands are missing, is this lovely understory. This is all it is, believe it or not. So this is called Wilson's Filmy Fern. And this is a specialist of wet habitats. So usually you'd have to go halfway up a mountain to find this. Uh, but here, because of the splash zone, it's allowed to keep wet. And the reason it's so delicate, we have a look at those leaves. They're literally just a cell thick. So they're very vulnerable to desiccation and they really need habitats like this that let them stay wet all year round. Um, but Wilson's filmy fern. So right here we actually have a holly tree 
Now, unusual circumstances, they don't actually grow into trees, they usually grow into shrubs. Um, so it's, these are pretty much specialists of rainforest system because they're forced to grow upwards to get light and that's why they grow up with the tree. And if you see these leaves, uh, I'll put a photo if you can, you see those little markings and that's actually a leaf holly minor, which is a fly. And the fly lays its maggot in between the leaf and the maggot eats through the leaf and makes those mines. Uh, so it's just quite interesting. So if you can see here we've got some new growth already in late January and this is red dead nettle. So as you can see it looks like a nettle but if I touch it I'm not getting stung at all. Uh, so it's evolved to look like nettle so it doesn't get eaten which is quite clever really. Um, yeah. So as you can see here, this forest has got quite a bit of standing deadwood. And this is probably one of the most undervalued habit micro habitats in forestry. There's a huge amount of fungus, uh, xylophagus insects, which are ones that eat wood, uh, and also things like golden eye ducks. They'll and woodpeckers will nest in dead trees like this. Uh, so it's really important that we keep standing deadwood in forestry going forward. So if you look at this stuff here. You might think that's a moss, you might think it's a lichen, but you're wrong. This here is a liverwort, and this is some of those basal plants in the entire kingdom. Some of the first plants that colonised land were stuff like this, stuff like liverworts. And we can thank oxygen, life on land, to plants like this. So next time you see a little green thing that's not a moss, be thankful. So if you see this uh, white stuff down here, this is mycorrhizae. So this is actually what the living organism of a fungus looks like. So it's in the ground and it's only the fruiting bodies that we sometimes see in some kinds of fungi. And these networks are really important. They help trees to absorb nutrients, to detect danger, um, and basically what the fungus gets out of that is sugar. So the tree trades sugar uh, for minerals in the soil, effectively. Guys, we have something called tree lungwort. And this is an ancient woodland indicator, only really found in temperate rainforests. So what I'm going to do is record this on iNaturalist. So all I'm going to do is take a photo, just like that. And I'll upload this and this will go to the recording schemes. So now we know this tree, this tree lung water is here. And that's something you guys can get involved with. And watch our YouTube because we've got an iNaturalist tutorial on there for you to use. So if you look up in birch trees quite often you'll see these masses of twigs and stuff and this is a, a gall created by a bacteria and we call this witch's broom because it looks a bit like a witch's broom but basically it's the plant's reaction to fighting off a bacterial infection and, and that's what creates that witch. Malcolm exploring in the wild. So this here is f uh, a glacial feature um, this came from when the glaciers would move across this area uh, they would pick up these large boulders these would be quite small for the glacier itself but to us they're quite big um, and once the ice melts away we're left with these boulders in random locations um, they can seem quite out of place but that's how they got there so you see here this is a pixie cup lichen so also known as cladonia and these little red bits here these are actually the reproductive organs and these will burst and release spores and that's how it reproduces. But yeah, that lovely scarlet there, really nice. Here we have some xylophagus fungus. So these are fungus that eat the dead wood. So we call this here turkey tails because it's almost like the tail of a turkey and this grows in just about any deciduous tree. And over here we've got a uh, birch polypore which is another wood-eating fungus but it only grows in birch trees so it's species specific.
Oh no! Oh. Maybe not the path to take. <laughs> not the path to take. I'll have to turn back. So this is horsehoof fungus. This is another Xylophagus fungus and actually in parts of Europe they use this in carving. They can make hats and shoes out of stuff like this. This is quite amazing. At the very top, by the way, I don't even know if there's three lots. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Maybe we'll just tell them. Seacles are like that. This is um, kind of what a river system should look like. Kind of like broken up like this instead of a big channel like in there. You can see all those dickets and that fish all breeding there and more habitat for wildlife. 